I'm honestly not sure how people can be so wrong all the time, but after watching as many apologists as we have, perhaps a more intelligent question is, can these people ever be right? That's something we need to keep in mind as we go forward because this is going to be really hard. Painfully hard, in fact, because these people wouldn't know right if they tripped over it and fell into it face first. Because, really, what else is new? If you remember, way back when now, we did a video from Dr. Daniel King, part of his Proof God is Real series, and he wasn't at all impressive. And that seems pretty standard for apologists because I can't think of a single one that would be remotely impressive to anyone who wasn't already mired in the religious gobbledygook that they call faith. Today, we're going to explore that some more, and I'll have a couple of questions for you along the way. I'd like to think that this might help the religious understand all of the places that they're going completely wrong, but, um... They don't really care about that, do they? I just wanted to take a moment up front to explain what's really going on here. I did the first part of his Proof God is Real video series way back when, and when people ran over to King's channel to challenge him on his statements, his only response was, Well, this is the first video in a series. Well, okay, that's fine. Fair enough, but that doesn't actually address any of the criticisms, does it? That's just being lazy. Now, I've never intended to do this as a series, it was just a one-off, but hey, why not, right? This is a very, very, very long series, 55 videos if I'm counting right, and I might not be because I don't know that I really look that close, but I figure that if his entire defense is watch my other videos, then I might as well at least try to do some of that. So, will we get any valid proofs for God? I wouldn't be holding my breath, but at least we're going to try. How far I'm going to go? Well, that depends on interest and whether or not King can actually make any interesting points, which, again, don't hold your breath. This might also be really spread out, because I've got a significant lead time between when I make a video and when it airs on the channel, and if I'm waiting for viewer input, as I actually am, I'm going to have to be patient, and that means you're going to have to be patient as well. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's go to Daniel King's video number two in his Proofs for God series. What is apologetics? Proof! God is real. Alright, I let that second part play because we're going to see, moving forward, I think, that the two have nothing at all to do with each other. Apologetics, since I always answer these questions before I let the apologist take a turn, according to the dictionary, is a branch of theology devoted to the defense of the divine origin and authority of Christianity. Granted, you could have apologists for any other religion as well, but we're going to stick with Christianity for the moment because that's where we are. The problem with this is that said definition doesn't actually address truth. It's a defense of the religion. It's a defense of the faith. It's not an evaluation of its rationality or factual correctness. Apologists they're just cheerleaders. They are the motivational speakers of the religious world. They exist to make those who already believe feel good about the things that they already believe. They don't exist to determine if any of the theology is actually true because they don't actually care if any of it is true. And their paying audience, they aren't interested because they're there to get smoke blown up their skirts. Let's just remember this simple fact as we get into it. Anybody can be an apologist. No expertise required. The only thing they need to be able to do is flap their lips. The 
word apologetics comes from the Greek word apologia, meaning to give a reasoned response. Then you people are doing a really, really, really bad job. Your idea of reasoned and my idea of reasoned have absolutely nothing at all to do with each other. This is why you'll quickly realize when watching them that they're going to assume that everything that they believe is already true. There's no reasoned response required. Their primary audience are believers. They're not skeptics. They're not atheists. It's not non-believers who are actually looking for a reason to believe. No, they're not trying to convince anyone that Christianity in this case is true. It's the people who already take it on faith. And they're trying to bolster that blind faith for a buck. This is true across the board, not just religion, but anywhere. You get, say, essential oil apologists, whose job it is to get up in front of people selling essential oils and pump them up. Why? So that they buy more essential oils, so that they can go out and spread the word. Of course, that's the kind of people that we're talking about here, people who are already in it, who just need to feel better about themselves. And that doesn't actually speak to the truth of the claims. Apologists write books and they give talks, all so that the people that they're aiming their information at can come and pay them to see them speak or to read their books. Money is the goal here, and whether you like it or not, I don't think King is any different. And it is used seven times in the New Testament. According to 1 Peter 3.15, the purpose of Christian apologetics is to rationally examine the beliefs of Christianity in order to give a reason for the hope that is in us. But you haven't done that, have you? This is just theistic story time. When the religious say reason, they don't actually mean reason. They mean, here's why I like this idea, and you should too. There's nothing rational in any of it. Keep in mind that rational means based on or in accordance with reason or logic. Now, that can be a deep rabbit hole to go down, but nothing that the religious are saying is actually rational. It's filled to the brim with bald rationalizations designed to get them to the things that they already believe. And that's something else, but it isn't actually being rational. Being rational requires that you use logic, reason, evidence, etc., etc., and they don't have any of that. They only have their fifis and the things that they really wish were true. But I'm sorry, that's not impressive. What you want to be true isn't actually true until you can demonstrate that it's true. Why don't you get on that? Apologists defend the Christian faith and combat on belief. It is biblical to use reason to encourage ourselves in our own faith and to persuade other people concerning the truth of God's word. Then why are you so bad at it? Because as we go through this series, however far we happen to get, because I don't know right now, we're going to see that he's got absolutely nothing. None of them actually do. You might think I'm making a bald prediction here, but... Uh, I've always been right about this. None of them have anything. He's got a lot of emotionally comforting claims aimed right down the gullet of the already faithful who aren't going to ask any difficult questions because they don't really care about the answers, but he doesn't have anything that would convince a skeptic that any of the things he's saying are true. They just want to make people feel good. And you might ask yourself, shouldn't the apologist know this? Well, I think most of them do. That, or they're just as dumb and delusional and gullible as the religious bobbleheads in the pews. Either they're in on the scam and know exactly what they're doing, and you have to remember that churches have been doing this crap forever. Services are set up specifically to garner emotional responses by the way the music is designed, etc., etc., etc. It is all set up to separate you from your money. So they either know what they're doing and it's a scam, or they don't, and they're just as misled as the people that they're preaching to. I've yet to see a demonstrable case of anything else in any apologist ever. You might get instances where it's both, 
but I haven't seen anyone who has really had anything worthwhile and demonstrable to say. The prophet Isaiah wrote, Come now, let us reason together. The apostle Paul went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. I've got to ask again then, why are you so bad at this? And it's not just King, it's all apologists. From William Lane Craig to Frank Turek to Greg Kugel, yada yada yada, they're all bad at this. Nothing that any apologist has to say is remotely convincing to anyone who doesn't already take this nonsense on faith. See, he's already assuming that the crap in the Bible is going to convince anyone, and he's wrong. It's there to shore up the faith of his intended religious audience because they've already been indoctrinated to believe that it's true. None of these supposed proofs for God are intended for atheists or skeptics or anybody who's actually honest. They're meant to convince existing Christians to throw more money in the collection plate so that the apologist or the pastor or the priest or whatever gets rich. He can't be so dumb that he doesn't realize that, right? Or maybe he thinks we don't see it. Maybe he thinks we can't see what's going on. And in that, he's just wrong. According to Luke 10, 27, believers are called to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our body. In a sense, apologetics is how we love God with our minds. Since apologetics provides a logical foundation for the Christian faith, apologetics is part of a strong theology. At least, that's the story that you like to tell each other. Now, how about you actually demonstrate that any of this is factually correct? Because we all know that it's not. It's part of the emotional glue that holds religious communities together. When you spend all of your time in a faith-based safe space telling each other how important you are, that might lead to community cohesion, but it certainly doesn't get you anywhere remotely close to the truth. Because if you were actually interested in the truth, and you're not, but if you were, they wouldn't start by blindly believing all of the things that they blindly believe. Honestly, go look at some of the religious debates that are out there, especially on does God exist? The theist never, ever gets remotely close to addressing that question. They just don't. They might make weak excuses for their reasons, but they never get down to the meat of the matter. How do you know that? Where do you get that information? Better yet, how do you test it? I don't care what you believe. I care what you can prove. Your faith doesn't mean a thing. It's only what you can demonstrate, and they can't demonstrate anything. They don't bother with that. They aren't interested in any kind of specific methodology for getting at the truth. They just want to believe. And this is why they're not impressing anybody on the non-religious side. Since apologetics provides a logical foundation for the Christian faith, apologetics is part of a strong theology. Before we can explain sin and salvation, atonement and the sacraments, reprobation and redemption, we must be able to discuss and defend God's creation of the universe and the historical fact of Christ's resurrection. Then, once again, why are you so bad at it? I know I keep asking that question, but it continues to be valid. Absolutely none of their so-called arguments would mean anything in any other field. They'd get laughed right off the stage. All they're doing is saying, I'm right because I'm right because I really want to be right. There is no independent corroboratory evidence, no verifiable predictions, no demonstrable and verifiable experiments that can be produced from anything theology says to show that anything in any religion actually exists in the real world. It's just fee-fees and faith, and that's nothing to be proud of. If God did not create the universe, then Adam and Eve are mythical people, and there's no such thing as sin. Well, 
you got that right at least. There never was an Adam and Eve, and sin has no demonstrable existence. If there is no God, and you haven't proven that, then there is nothing at all to sin against. Prove God first, because faith doesn't count. This is where we continually run into problems. They're not using words in the same way that we are. When they say proof, they mean, well, it sounds good to me. They're not talking about anything that's objectively verifiable, using demonstrable evidence to support a rationally defensible conclusion that arises solely from the facts that we have at hand. Your feelings don't matter. But that's all that they've got. It's why they don't actually get anywhere. Because they just don't give a damn. If Jesus did not rise physically from the dead, then there is no salvation and no eternal life with him after death. You say that like it's a bad thing. Because reality is what's actually real, not what coddles your pathetic fifis. You can hear that he's trying to appeal to people who desperately want all of this to be true for completely emotional reasons. You know, his meal ticket. That's the core difference between, say, science and theology. Science and similar fields, they want to reach the best representation of truth that they can, given the demonstrable tools at hand, and... Theology, they just want to feel good. They want to be happy. It's all emotion and zero evidence because they don't care about that. It's faith over fact because the facts are scary. It's trying to get to what people wish was true instead of what is actually true in the real world that we all share. And that's just dumb. The most emotionally comforting lie in the world is still a lie. And the most emotionally uncomfortable fact, it remains a fact. Truth is truth no matter how it makes you feel. Because your feelings just don't matter. So apologetics should be a primary concern of Christian education. Apologetics has been called pre-evangelism. And so as an evangelist, my main goal in life is to ask people to make Jesus the Lord of their lives. But before I can convince people that Jesus is Lord, we have to have a discussion about whether God is real and if Jesus really rose from the dead. So when are you going to get to that? I don't think that you can, at least not in any kind of rational, evidence-based way, but by all means, give it a shot. All that you're doing is appealing to the Fifi's, and that's not remotely credible. It's actually kind of stupid when you think about it. I've seen this happen a lot in things like, I don't know, UFO apologists. They'll say, well, don't you really want there to be aliens? Well, who cares what anybody wants? It's either true or it's not true. It's real or or it's not real. Your feelings don't remotely enter into it. The religious will try, don't you really want to go to heaven? Well, who cares? Show me that there is a heaven. Show me that there is a God. Make sure you've got something tangible to trot out there first, because your ridiculous philosophical claims that invariably come up down the road, they only show that you and your followers are complete and total morons. Which is why that's who he's making these videos for, because nobody else would take him seriously. It isn't hard to see once you know what you should look for. Dumb or dishonest? Pick one. So apologetics lays the foundation for evangelism. That's why it's so important for you to study and become proficient in apologetics. Thereafter, he tries to sell his books and his courses, and of course, we're going to ignore all that. We know that's what this is really about. If I thought that his book would do him any good, I might try to pick it up somewhere and review it, but it's going to be all the same old, tired, already debunked garbage that these videos are already going to go over, and at least these don't cost me anything, and I don't have to put any of my money into his coffers, so uh, I'm not going to do that. See, that's why he's not talking to us. We don't pay him. When you rely on an audience for your daily bread, you give them what they want, whether it's worthwhile or not. It's why these people don't have real jobs, where they don't have to rely on fleecing the sheep. There's always a profit motive here. So anyway, what did you think? 
I'm probably going to do a couple more of these videos in pretty quick succession, maybe once a week, once every other week, I don't know, we'll see. Then I'm going to wait to see if there's any interest in my continuing. Can King actually provide any real evidence for the existence of God? Or is this going to be the same old tired apologetic nonsense that we've all seen so many times before? I know what I think, but feel free to vote in the comments below. How far do you think we should follow the insanity? I guess that's up to you.